Hello musicians! In this activity, we're going to do a multi-track recording of Beatbox. Now, this is really easy to do and it's a lot of fun, so let's get at it. The first thing I will say to you is that if you need to pause from time to time, please do so. You may need a bit of extra time to record a track or maybe do a little editing. So take your time, don't be afraid to pause. Now another thing too is I'm wearing headphones, as you can see. I'm wearing those because if I was using speakers, when I do multi-track recording, as I play back a previous track, the microphone will hear it and cause feedback, and we don't want that. So it's a good idea to use headphones when you're doing multi-track recording. Okay, here we go. I'm going to hit, first of all, I'm going to hit the level right here, the meter, to check my level. And it looks pretty good. And you notice that I'm not clipping. It's not hitting the top. It was hitting the far top of the meter. It will be clipping, which would be distortion. If you're not sure about how to set this level, be sure to watch the video on setting the recording levels and found here in this series. Now, I've, I'm satisfied with that level, so now let's hit record and lay down our first track. One, two, three, four. That's our bass drum track. You may ask yourself, why did I count in one, two, three, four? Well, I counted it in so that I'll know when to start with track two. If I didn't have a count in, I wouldn't know when to start. Okay, let's do track two. I'm just going to hit record and start recording. One, two, three, four. Ah, we got a problem here, don't we? Look at this. I'm clipping. The level is hitting the top, so I'm clipping. I need to reduce my, my record level to do this track. So I'm going to delete this track, and I'm going to lower my record level a little down to around there, and let's try it again. One, two, three, four. And stop. Now there you go. So I see where I counted in. When I counted in one, two, three, four from the first track, I was able to count along. That's going to help me sync up later, especially if I have tracks that don't have a very pronounced rhythm. It's a great idea to count in with the first track. Okay, now if I play this back, I think we're going to be surprised that it's not actually in sync. Let's play and listen. One, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah, they're not in sync. You can see here these tracks are not in sync. So what I need to do now is move the second track to line up with the first track. And the way I do that is with my time shift tool, which is right here. Now, if you're not sure how to use the time shift tool, you can watch the video in this series on how to how to use the time shift tool. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is use my zoom tools, and again, there's a tutorial on zoom tools, to look closely at my snare drum, bass drum lines. Now, I want these two tracks, these two tracks to line up exactly at the same beat. So they should be like that. Let's look and see at the other ones. Looks pretty good. You have to fine tune a little bit visually. That looks pretty good. Now, of course, most important is to listen. So let's listen again and see if it's lined up. One, two, three, four. It's a little, a little bit early. It's a little bit early, I think. So let's go back again to it. And let's use a time shift tool to bring it back a hair. There we go. Now let's have a listen again. One, two, three, four. I like that. Okay, I think that's much better. Okay, so now I am ready to export this as an MP3. So I'm going to go to my file menu and I'm going to go down to export. If you're not sure how to export, an mp3, you can watch the tutorial here on how to do it. I'm going to say beatbox and Andrew. Okay, and now I'm going to put on my desktop. That's fine. It's an mp3. That's fine. I can look at my options. Um, I don't want it to be too big, so I'm going to lower my quality level because I don't really, this is an exercise, just an activity, so I don't really need to have great quality. I'm going to lower to 128 kilobits. Okay, and save. 
and my metadata again if you don't know how to use metadata you can watch the tutorial on metadata I'm not going to bother I'm going to click OK and your tracks will be mixed down to a single mono channel no problem OK that's fine and Audacity will produce a mp3 for me so there you go I have an mp3 here now beatbox Andrew mp3 now if you're doing this activity as part of a course you'll need to submit this mp3 to your instructor for evaluation so be sure to save it in a place that you'll know where it is and you'll be able to pass it on to your instructor to get your evaluation so be careful about that okay so that's it that's multi-track beatbox recording in audacity